Hey family, welcome to our Sunday School channel. I hope that you are excited to be a part of this channel. And I hope that something that is said uh, during our time together will help you along your weekly journey. Um, I want to welcome all of my newbies to our channel and then all of those veterans that have been on this journey with me uh, as we've been trekking through the word of God. I thank you for continuing to be a part of my family. So on today, before we get into our lesson, let us open up in a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just come to you right now thanking you, Lord God, for your grace, thanking you for your mercy, Lord God, thanking you for forgiving us for our sins, Lord God, thanking you, Lord God, for just being what we need when we need you, oh God, Lord God, and I need you right now, Lord God, so Lord God, I just ask you, Lord God, to uh, go before me on this lesson, Lord God, hide me behind the cross, oh God, Father God, so that I am able, Lord God, to give what you have given to me, Lord God, to the people that are going to come on this channel, oh God. I pray that something is said, Lord God, that will touch their lives in such a way, Lord God, that they will want to dig deeper in the word to find out, Lord God, what more you have for them, oh God. Lord, so I just thank you right now for the constant uh, study that you had me on, the journey that you have me on as I go through your word, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord God, that you get the glory out of everything that I do. And on this YouTube channel, Channel, Lord God, that it be uh, set apart for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so our lesson uh, for today is called uh, God Provide Judges to Help Moses. So we know from previous lessons that Moses... Um, uh, was the one that uh, God used to help deliver the children of Israel from uh, from Egypt, uh, from the Pharaoh. And so they've gone through the wilderness. They w w went without water. They went without food. And God provided in both instances for them. He gave them um, manna and quail to eat. And he also provided water uh on last week. So we are going to now go into another part of uh, God's providing uh, in our lesson. And we're going to our scripture. Uh, it, our topical scripture is going to be from Exodus 18, 13 through 26. Exodus 18, 13 through 26. And I'm reading it from the NIV version. But of course, like I tell y'all always, use whatever version you feel more comfortable with. There are so many versions out there. As long as it does not uh, take away the meaning that God intended, then we can use whatever version we like. And so it says, the next day Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people. And they stood around him from morning till evening. When his father-in-law saw all that that Moses was doing for the people, he said, what is this you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit as judge while all these people stand around you from morning till evening? Moses, is, Moses answered him, because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me and I decide whether the parties and wh whether I, I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and instructions. Moses' father-in-law replied, what you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me and I will give you some advice and may God be with you. You must you must be the people's representative before God and bring their disputes to him. Teach them his decrees and instructions and show them the way they are to live and how they are to behave. But select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over, house, over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times, but have them bring every difficult case to you. The simple cases they can decide themselves. That will make your load lighter because they will share it with you. If you do this and God so commands, you will be able to stand the 
to stand the strain and all these people will go home satisfied. Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. He chose capable men from all Israel and made them leaders of the people, officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They served as judges for the people at all times. The difficult cases they brought to Moses, but the simple ones they decided themselves. That's our topic scripture for today. And then we have related scriptures. I have three for you. And remember, with these related scriptures, you are to go back in your free time, read over them, and take down notes and, and find out what God would want you to uh, gain from these scriptures. They are related to this to the lesson that we are, are going to be on today. The first one is Numbers 11, 11 through 17. The second one is Deuteronomy 1, 9 through 18. And the last one is Acts 1. One, Acts 6, I'm sorry, 1 through 7. That's Acts 6, 1 through 7. Today's aim for this lesson, we have facts, principle, and application. And our, let me get there. Our facts for the lesson is to clearly understand God's direction through Jethro regarding delegation of responsibility so Jethro was the name of Moses father-in-law and so uh, the facts of this lesson is for us to understand delegation of responsibilities the principle is to see that God's work done in God's way has God's support which leads to its success that is the principle God's work God's way God's support success you got it? God's work. That's number one. Number two, doing God's way. Number three, you get God's support. And in the end, you have success. And the application to seek God's direction in any task he sets before you. And the introducing this lesson, <clears throat> it says, Having delivered the people out of slavery, God was now bringing them through the desert into the promised land. And he set up a system that would help the people live with one another and honor him as their God. So after, so now they're about to get ready to go into the promised land. You know, he's setting them up and everything, but he wants to make sure that they know how to relate with each other and with him. And so he set up a system uh, that we are talking about on this lesson on today. There are three uh, major points to this lesson, and the three major points are uh, perceptive conclusion, sound advice, and humble action. And so we're going to start off with, uh, from our lesson, perceptive conclusion, and that is in Exodus 18, 13 through 18. I'll go on, go on and read that uh, 13 through 18 for you just one more time so that you'll have a greater understanding of what, um, what we're talking about. Okay, and it says the next day Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people and they stood around him from morning to evening when his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people he said what is this you are doing for the people why do you alone sit as judge while all these people stand around you from morning till night Moses answered because the people came to me to seek God's will whenever they have a dispute it is brought to me and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and instructions Moses father-in-law replied what you are doing is not good you and these people will come you and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out the work is too heavy for you you cannot handle it and so from that we have uh, three points under perception, uh, perceptive, uh, perceptive conclusion, and that is observation, explanation, and judgment. Okay, and so explanation, uh, let me get that out. From our text in the, ex in the explanation, and I know I'm going to start with observation. Uh, for the observation, Jethro had not seen the things Moses and the people had witnessed, but he believed them uh, them, and acknowledged the Lord as the God who had delivered the people from under the hand of Egypt, Egyptians. And you can go to verse 10 of uh, Exodus 18 to see that. The morning after Jethro arrived, Moses sat 
to judge the people. It is clear that Moses was uh, hearing disputes among the people and judging criminal cases. As the nation's leader, he would naturally be looked to for such service in the ancient East, in the ancient Near East. To be a political and military leader was also to be a judici judicial leader, required to render decisions in in cases of controversy. Moses' father-in-law was a leader among the Midianites and was familiar with the demands of such a job. Observing Moses as he judged the people, it became clear to Jethro that this, that this practice could not continue. It was simply too much. And also, I may note that uh, giving up his responsibility as a husband and father, I believe, was not in God's will and shows how overwhelmed Moses really was. And if you read the, the, the text, you will learn that uh, Moses sent his wife and his children to go live with the father-in-law because the responsibility of leading the children of Israel had gotten kind of great for him. So then the explanation, we're going to... Uh, from this uh, lesson, it says, Moses explained to Jethro that the people came to him to uh, inquire of God. Moses was serving as an intermediary, seeking the Lord's answers to their disputes. Moses also explained that he taught the people the decrees of God and his laws and or instructions. The law of God had not yet been formally given on Mount Sinai. And then the last point under perceptive conclusion, conclusion is judgment. And it says Jethro uh, bluntly told Moses that what he was doing was not good. He did not mean the people did not deserve justice or that Moses should have no role in dispensing the judgment. However, it was clear to Jethro that the system was not working and was too great a burden for Moses alone. He warned that continuing on this path would wear, would wear Moses out and the people as well. Then our next point is called sound judgment. And there are three also three uh, sub points to this one. In, intercede and teaching is one. Uh, delegate authority is two. And recognize God's sovereignty is three. And so for interceding and teaching, the first bit of advice Jethro offered was, um, what, what was be thou for the people to Godward. This was simply a way of saying that Moses should represent the people before God. Jethro was not advocating that Moses give up his prophetic office. Indeed, he was to continue to bring their cases before God. Second, Jethro advised Moses to teach the people the law God had revealed already and show them how to live and work. So then in delegating authority, Jethro went on to advise his son-in-law to appoint qualified men to aid in the task he was currently shouldering alone. What qualities must such men possess? Jethro offered four qualifications. The first one is that they must be able men. The word here means strength. It certainly includes physical strength, but suggests moral strength as well. Second, Moses' helpers must be God-fearing, fearing God. They must be sincere followers of the Lord who will take their responsibility before him seriously, knowing uttermost reverence for God. And three, uh, they must be men of truth. This means they must be faithful in carrying out their jobs and faithful to the Lord who is their ultimate master. And finally, Jethro said these men must hate covetedness or unjust gain. Men who could be influenced by the prospect of material gain must never be allowed to stand in judgment. And then he goes on to say the men would act as judges in minor cases. More serious cases would be passed on to the next level with only the most important cases being brought to Moses. And then we go into recognize God's sovereignty. Jethro himself did not did not presume to speak for God in the, in the matter. He made his proposal uh, con contingent upon the Lord's approval. If God commanded thee so, if God commanded thee so, is what Jethro said after he had given Moses all of uh, his advice. 
Then we go on to the last point, which is humble action. And there's two sub points under that. The first one is Moses listens. And the second one is Moses acts. And in Moses listens, it says, Moses was humble enough to listen to his father-in-law. He recognized his words as sound, wise advice. And then Moses acts. He acts on the words that his father-in-law gave to him, on the advice that his father-in-law gave to him. Moses followed Jethro's counsel and appointed able men to serve as judges at various levels throughout Israel. Uh, there are at least three important principles that this, in, that this incident illustrates. The first principle is it demonstrates the importance of encouragement. The second one is it shows the wisdom of shared responsibility. And the last one it is it says Jethro's proposal shows that God offers that God often supplies needs through other people's ability and wisdom. And that concludes our uh, backdrop of our lesson for today. And now I'm going to give you the practical points from the lesson. And there are six practical points. Our first one is effective leaders will accept honest observation and evaluation without taking personal offense. Effective leaders will accept honest observation and evaluation without taking offense. Number two, as believers seek advice from one another, God opens a door for them to learn more about him. Number three, leaders should seek help in ministry in order to stay focused and avoid burnout. It's so easy to become burned out in ministry, but I think one of the biggest reasons why more leaders, teachers, or uh, anyone who's doing ministry work get burned out because we try to do it all on our own. God, did, that was not God's plan. And so in order to not become burned out, we have to open the door up for someone else to come alongside of us. Number four, Christian leaders should extend their ministry by training others and delegating. That's in any job position. I mean, even in, in my corporate world that I work in, uh, you know, my leader, my manager, he has an assistant, you know, someone who goes alongside him, helps him out. It's not to take away from anything from him, but it is to be a help for him. And that same thing can should apply in ministry as well. Uh, number five, healthy leaders Healthy leadership means accepting that no one can do everything. If, if you think that you can do it all, that nobody else can do it, then you are sadly mistaken. There is a million and one ways to skin a cat. You are not the only one with the bright idea. So open opportunity for other people to come alongside you and work with you. And the last one, sharing the workload and delegating assignments gives a leader time for more important tasks. I do believe that. When you get when you have someone else helping you out, then you can you can focus on something else. I think about lead pastors definitely. A pastor that is doing everything, have his hands in everything, is so unfortunate because he's so busy, he doesn't have the time to hear from God. And you can see that and you can hear it in his messages. You you can tell where you, you're beginning to hear repetitious stories or because he hasn't had the time to sit down and really seek God because he's been running all over the place, all over the place. So I think that it, it would benefit him to take a break. Sit down. Go away. They call them sabbaticals. Take those sabbaticals. Take those times away and let someone else take on that responsibility. Now we get to my favorite part and that's the research and discussion questions. And I think the research and discussion questions today tie in really well with the practical points and also with our lesson. And so I, I hope that the words that I share from our um from our questions, uh, my answers, I hope that that uh, also give you some insight and also make you want to think deeper into these questions as well. So question number one says, why do many leaders find it difficult to share the ministry workload with other qualified people? Uh, I, for my question I gave, I said, fear pride and control are three re reasons I feel that leaders have a problem sharing the load in ministry. 
This could be because they may feel the helper will try to take over. They may feel the helper will not do it uh, the way the leader wants it to be done. They could feel that it will show a lack in them, the leader's ability, some type of weakness. There could be a host of other reasons, all leading to the three reasons I stated, fear, pride, and control. Number two, it says, what do you know about Moses that helps you understand his view of leadership before this intervention by Jethro? During their journey up until this incident, whenever there was a problem, the people would uh, always go to Moses. In previous lessons, we saw people blame Moses every time things didn't look as if it was in their favor. And I want to read some of those for you just, just so you can have a background on it. Uh, we're going to go to three scriptures. Uh, Exodus 15 is the first one. Exodus 15, 22 through 24 and it says then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea and they went into the desert of Shur for three days they traveled in the desert without finding water when they came to Mara they could not drink its water because it was bitter this is why the people this is why the place is called Mara so the people grumbled against Moses saying what are we to drink then Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water and the water became fit for drinking. So that was the first incident. It had to do with water. Uh, they were lacking water. So what did they do? They complained to Moses right out of, right out of their deliverance from uh, the Red Sea. Then we go to Exodus 16, 2 and 3. And it says, in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Opportunity too for them to blame poor old Moses for the situation that they're in. And then the last one I'm going to read for you is Exodus 17, 1 and 2. And it says the whole assembly, uh, the whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, replied why do you quarrel with me why do you put the lord to the test as a leader moses depended on god in every case in each and every one of those cases moses went to god depending in god he took the complaints of the people to god he understood his limitations and so should leaders today we all as leaders we should un we, we should understand that we are limited and but god is not and so whenever the people that are under us have a problem we should take that problem to God just as Moses did. And so number three says, how do people today respond when asked? How do people today respond when asked for advice and help in settling disputes? Today, most people normally respond from their own experiences. Very rarely do we find that people will give what thus says the Lord. I know that to be the case. I mean, we always rely on our own experience because some for some people, there's a lack in what thus says the Lord is. You know, so you can't give what you don't have. And if you don't have the word down in you, th th there's no way that it's going to come back out from you. So I suggest everybody getting in the word so that you can share the word word of God when someone comes to you to give advice, to get advice. Number four, it says, how should a Christian respond when a friend or family member ignores solid godly advice? This was a good one, guys. Uh, this is my answer. When someone ignores your godly advice, I suggest you do what Matthew 10 and 14 says. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that house or town Shake the dust off your feet. Shake it off and move on. There is a German proverb that I got out of our lesson uh, from today that says, everyone knows good counsel except him that has need of it. 
<laughs> so whenever the, the person that needs the most is the one that don't have that don't have it, but everybody else know it. And when someone does not want to take the advice that you're giving them, hey, shut the dust, dust off your feet, pat your shoulder, keep it moving. I mean, it's on them. The consequence will be theirs. Our last question. I believe this is the last one. Oh, yes, this is our last question. And it said, healthy leadership means accepting. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading a point. Uh, number five, what qualities should be uh, considered when selecting church leaders? What qualities should be considered when selecting church leaders? I believe Exodus 18 and 21 through 22 from our lesson gives us a good idea of the qualities needed when selecting leaders. Uh, and, and I will go back and read that just for you guys. It's 18, Exodus 18, 21 and 22. It says, but select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain and appoint them as officials over thousands hundreds fifties and tens and so number one able men with physical and moral strength able to to get the job done as god would have them to do it and i think strength and morals the strength part is able physically to get the job done morally to do it the way god wants is done that i believe is the moral part number two god fearing Realizing that they are only a resource vessel used by God and that he is the source. So I think that a God-fearing man would know that he is limited, but God is not. And he will go to God on behalf of the situation. Number three, trustworthy, faithful, doing everything as unto the Lord. That is number three. That, that man or woman, whoever is selected, I believe that these are the good, good character traits to look for in that person. And the last one is hate covenant, covetousness. And covetousness is wrongly desirous of wealth or possessions, greed, uh, unjust gain. Having integrity cannot be easily influenced by material gain. So that person must have integrity and cannot be easily influenced by material gain. If you have somebody who is... Um, is greedy behind a dollar and you put them in a leadership position, especially where they have to accept money, what do you think that they're going to do? I mean, it's obvious. So the best thing to do is when you're looking for someone to hold a leadership position, especially in the body of Christ, these four character traits, I believe that that would be very beneficial. And then I want to, um, I'll end with the words from D.L. Moody. And I think that is appropriate for this lesson because to me, this lesson was more about uh, having a, a body that's working together for the common goal, the common good, and how it's not good for one person to try to shoulder the responsibility of everything on their own. And so uh, D.L. Moody said it's like this from uh, 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 for. From our lesson, he said, I would rather put 10 men to work than to do the work of 10 men. I'll repeat it. I would rather put 10 men to work than to do the work of 10 men. And I believe by having more men uh, working together, you could get more accomplished. But when you have one man trying to do the work of 10 men, it will take him much longer to do it and he will not get as much accomplished. So thank you guys for uh, joining me on this uh, Sunday school lesson. I pray you get something out of it. I pray that it encourages you. I pray that it even challenges you because if you are a leader and you are not um, having someone to work with you uh, or, or even if you're a leader and you can't seem to find someone to work with you, maybe, you know, you're looking in the wrong place or maybe you are one of the leaders that we talked about in our question who has a problem with fear, pride, and control where you uh, can't or, or you just uh, can't seem to find somebody that, that is willing to go alongside you because they know that you exhibit these traits. So we will end on that note. 
uh, in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this lesson. Lord God, it was so informative. It was so encouraging, but Lord, it was so challenging for even me, even in my household. Sometimes I feel like my way is the only way and I know the best way and I can do it all by myself. But I realized that you gave me a partner. You gave me a husband to go alongside me. And so everything I don't have to do alone. And Lord God, you also gave me kids. I have grown kids and they can help out and shoulder, shoulder some of the burden of the household. Lord God, and even in our church, Lord God, there are so many people with so many different gifts. And Lord God, I believe that when we tap into those gifts, Lord God, the burden or the responsibility, I won't say burden, the responsibility of your kingdom, Father God, will be uh, accomplished as you see fit. So Father, I just thank you on today, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that if even if just one leader listens to this message, Lord God, that they would begin to uh, change the way they do things or rethink the way they do things. And so Father, I give you the glory and the honor because you deserve it. You really do. I thank you for my life. I thank you for this opportunity. I do not take it lightly. I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys, remember, you can get a copy of our book if you want it from www.uniongospelpress. I will put the description of it in this video at the end. I will also put a picture of it uh, at the end of the video. So don't log off until you see that picture if you want to uh, go out and order your book and purchase it. Until next time, remember I love you with the love of the Lord. Bye!